I was diagnosed with early stage ovarian cancer and uterine cancer. She was diagnosed with two types of cancers. And that was devastating for us. It affected all aspects of, of the family. It's a ripple effect and I describe it, you know, like throwing a stone in a pond. It, that impact of that cancer diagnosis is that stone, you know, being thrown. And then the ripples go out far and wide. Cancer is something that just doesn't affect the patient, but affects their loved ones, their extended family, immediate family, community. Why? Because it's all encompassing. For the patient, it's not only the physical symptoms of the disease, but the emotional pain, the fear of death. And then it's a very uh, involved uh, process. Most patients with cancer will have multiple types of therapies. The burden of treatment is so high that it's just unrealistic to expect a patient to do it all alone. So what happens? Their loved ones have to step in, be there, take them to their appointments, soothe their symptoms when they are at home, when nausea is acting up, pain is acting up, numbness and tingling is acting up, fatigue. Most cancer patients um, you know, uh, experience multiple symptoms and some of these symptoms are quite disabling. After every round of chemo, about two or three days later, you would know, for certain, you would know that you were going to feel like you were beat up. Um, your body aches and muscle pain, um, bone pain uh, was pretty intense. And um, that's when I tried the therapies that we, we offer now. With the chemo, treatment as anybody who has been touched by cancer comes another whole set of issues that a lot of people don't even talk about that only the, in the intimacy of your household you know uh, what the patient is going through, what the caregiver is going through. I would recommend for the caregiver to learn a little bit of these therapies because in the middle of the night it's you and the patient, and you can apply so some of those techniques. And firsthand, this really helped Sandra and helped me. It works so well. It works so well, these, these modalities, that uh, the day of my surgery, uh, it was delayed about eight hours. I was already in the prep room. I mean, the IVs were already in there. I was exceptionally calm and peaceful, which is very unlike me. Um, and especially because of I, I was so anxious and uh, nervous about it. That was right there a big sign that these therapies really are super. This really can help a person get in the proper state of mind, get in the proper uh, calmness to be able to receive what they're gonna, about to undertake. How it affected me as a caregiver was when she was sleeping, I was able to sleep. I was able to rest or other moments during the day, if she was resting, if she was relaxed, she was peaceful, I could do the laundry, I could pay the bills, I could do the dishes, I could take care of the household, if you will. I was uncertain about the, the, the complementary therapies on, on how it might impact me, but as I began my, my journey with cancer, I like to think it was my fight against cancer. You know, I can't speak for, for all cancer patients, but I know for me, you know, it's, uh, I view it as a, a combination of my, my physical health, uh, my mental and emotional health, my spiritual health, and, and it's a, a system, you know, and, and when, when you get bogged down with the mental aspect of it, and, and the weight sometimes can be extraordinarily heavy. For me, it was extraordinarily heavy early in my diagnosis. Uh, it just, it causes physical exhaustion. And then, you know, if you're physically exhausted, you know, how can you take care of your, your diet, or how can you take care of your exercise level? and so forth. And, and I have found that the complementary therapies, uh, I'm a, a big fan of the, the acupuncture. It allows me to, it helps cure my insomnia. Uh, that's a, a side effect of uh, uh, my uh, immuno, immunotherapy treatments. Uh, it also helps me uh, relax. <laughs> and, uh, and just the, that ability to ra relax, to allow me to get some sleep and, and, and cure uh, and help solve for my insomnia allows me to be stronger. I think this foundation allows many of our patients who may be skeptical of integrative and healing therapies who may be so focused on just getting through their day and the side effects from their treatments, this foundation allows them to cross that threshold. Once they cross the threshold, once they experience the benefit, it changes their worldview, it changes 
the worldview of their families and their community. And I think that's when we now can make, create another ripple effect. And that ripple effect is not of the negative consequences of cancer, but all the goodness that comes from being treated as a whole person. Our short-term goals are to increase from 17% to 25% of the people that we serve in the cancer community in, in our five cities. That's our immediate uh, short-term goal. And we cannot even fathom going there without the support of people in our community helping us. And helping us, you know, with talking about us, connecting us with people that they may know that could support our cause or supporting our cause themselves. But we really, really need uh, financial support to grow and to sustain what we're doing. Because without the funds, we cannot give grants to the patients. So that's a very simple math. There is a huge demand. Uh, every time they open a new cancer center in the area, we know the demand is gonna grow and we can only grow if we have more financial support of the community. It means a lot uh, to me knowing that there's people alongside me. I draw strength uh, from knowing that there's a tribe of folks. Some people I know, and some people I don't even know. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting them yet, and I can hardly wait to meet them so I can thank them in person. I'm extraordinarily grateful for the, the, the medical professor, uh, professionals that helped me, uh, the therapeutic providers that helped me, uh, the Sandra J. Wing Foundation for bringing those uh, together, and then, of course, the donor community, the, the people that are out there to support the patients and our caregivers. Uh, extraordinarily grateful, and I'd like to say thank you.